Hello, this is Mr. Millings, and today what I want to do is explain the idea of uh, specific heat capacity. All right, so we have a little fish in this pond here, and the fish is saying, I love the specific heat capacity of water. Now, right now, this, not may, this might not make very much sense, but hopefully by the end of this 10-minute uh, instructional video, video uh, it, it should make more sense. So let's take a look at an example. Let's suppose, for example, I've got three substances. I've got one gram of gold at 25 degrees Celsius, one gram of aluminum at 25 degrees Celsius, and one gram of lead at 25 degrees Celsius. So I have three substances here, all with the same masses and all at the same starting temperature. And what we want to know is how much thermal energy will it take to raise the temperature of each one of these substances one degree Celsius. All right, so we want to know how much thermal energy whether it come from the sun or a flame or some sort of heat source, must each one of these substances absorb in order to raise their temperature one degree Celsius. All right, so we want to raise the temperature of this gold one degree Celsius to 26 degrees. Same with the aluminum. And same with the lead. And the question is, will each one of these substances require the same amount of energy in order to raise their temperatures one degree Celsius. We have the same masses, so conventional wisdom might say, yes, they do require the same amount of energy, but that is not the case. And that is because of a concept known as specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity, people, is the amount of thermal energy it requires to raise the temperature of one gram of substance one degree Celsius and each substance has its own specific heat capacity. Now these specific heat capacities can often be found in, in, in a table in your textbook or you can just go ahead and Google search specific heat capacities and uh, a table will pop up of different substances and their specific heat capacities. So to answer our question here, how much thermal energy, how much thermal energy will this gold need in order to raise its temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius if I've only got one gram of it? Well, what we're asking essentially is what is the specific heat capacity of gold? All right, and specific heat capacity is typically denoted by the variable lowercase c. All right, so I looked this up in a, in a table on Google and it said or it showed that the specific heat capacity of, of gold is 0 0.13 joules per gram degree Celsius. So what does that mean, people? Well, this means if I've got one gram of gold, which we do right here, and I want to raise this temperature one degree Celsius, which is what we're trying to do here, then this gold will need to absorb 0.13 joules of energy. Let's look at the aluminum here. All right. Once again, we want to heat one gram of this aluminum up, one degree Celsius. So basically what we're asking is, what is the specific heat capacity of aluminum? Well, the specific heat capacity of aluminum, if we turn to a table, is 0 0.89 joules per gram degree Celsius. And what does this mean? This means if I've got one gram of aluminum, which we do, and we want to raise this temperature one degree Celsius, which is what we're trying to do here, then this aluminum will need to absorb 0.89 joules of thermal energy in order to do so. Let's look at the lead next door here. All right, if I want to heat one gram of this lead up, one degree Celsius, well, this would require 0 0.0126 joules per gram degree Celsius. All right, and what this means once again is that if you've got one gram of lead, which we do right here, and we want to heat it up one degree Celsius, then this lead here will need to absorb 0.126 joules of thermal energy. All right, so what you need to know is that metals, which are good conductors of heat, will typically have very low specific heat capacities. And you'll notice each one of these specific heat capacities, the gold, the aluminum, and the lead, have very low specific heat capacities. Let's take a look at another slide. All right, in this slide or example, we're going to take a look at the specific heat capacity of water and apply that concept to the calorie. Uh, so let's take a look here. In this picture here, we have a cube. All right, we've got a cube that is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. And what if I asked you to determine what the volume of this cube is? Well, if we want to determine the volume of this cube, it's quite simple. We take the length times its width times its height, and that will give us the volume of this cube. So if I take one centimeter 
times one centimeter times one centimeter, I will end up with one cubic centimeter or one centimeter cubed. All right, so the volume of this cube here is one centimeter or one centimeter cubed. Now, what if I fill this cube up with water? All right, so I'm going to fill this cube up with some water. I'm going to completely fill it up with water. And I were to ask you, what is the volume of this water? Well, the volume of this water, people, would also be one centimeter cubed of H2O. And if I were to ask you what the mass of this water is, well, the mass of one centimeter cubed of water is always going to be one gram. All right? And you should know this because the density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. All right, so I've got one gram of water here. And what we want to do with this water is we want to raise its temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius, a temperature change of just one degree Celsius. And the question I want to ask here is how much thermal energy do you think this one gram of water here is going to need in order to raise its temperature one degree Celsius from 25 degrees to 26 degrees? Well, the answer to that question is quite simple. It's one calorie. All right, one calorie. And that is because the specific heat capacity of water is one calorie. And what that means, people, is that if you've got one gram of water and you want to raise its temperature one degree Celsius, it will require one calorie of energy to do so. Let me just erase this here. All right. All right, so let's go through that again. All right, we've got one gram of water. We want to raise this temperature one degree Celsius. This water is going to need to absorb one calorie of energy in order to do so. All right, another way that we can express this is in joules. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so depending on what your teacher is asking for, uh, will determine what unit you need to use. But basically, the specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius or one calorie per gram degree Celsius. All right, so in this question here, if you want to heat this water up one degree Celsius, it will take 4.18 joules or one calorie. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, people, in this example here, we have a table of, uh, of different specific heat capacities uh, for different substances, all right? And you'll notice that each one of these is expressed in different specific heat capacity units. And all I wanted to do is just quickly explain these different units because you might see them uh, in your textbook or your teacher might talk about the specific heat capacity in these different units. So I just wanted to go over what each one meant. Let's take a look at this first example here, water. All right? <clears throat> It says right here that water has a specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Well, what does that mean, people? Well, this means if I've got one gram of water and I want to heat it up one degree Celsius, it's going to need to absorb 4.184 joules of thermal energy in order to do so. All right, in some of your textbooks or in some of your classrooms, they might use this specific heat capacity unit, joules per kilogram degree Celsius. All right, and uh, let's explain this. What this means is that if you have one kilogram of water here and you want to raise its temperature one degree Celsius, all right, that water will need to absorb 4,184 joules of thermal energy in order to do so. All right, let's take a look at this one, joules per kilogram Kelvin, very similar to the one right next door to the left. All right, what this means is that if you have four, I'm sorry, if you have one kilogram of water and you want to raise its temperature one Kelvin, then that water will need to absorb 4,184 joules of energy in order to do so. And last, we've got calories per, kilo, or per gram degree Celsius. And what this means, people, is if you've got one gram of water and you want to raise its temperature one degree Celsius, that water will need to absorb one calorie. All right, so these are the, mo the, most, uh, the most common specific heat capacity units that you will find in your textbook and uh, in your classrooms. So I just wanted to explain those real briefly. Let's take a look at some examples here where we can tie this all in together. Okay, in this example here, we've got a table of substances and their specific heat capacities expressed in joules per kilogram Kelvin. And I just wanted to ask uh, or pose a few questions and, and hopefully uh, you'll understand what's happening here. 
and just tie in all the different things that we've talked about in this instructional video. It says right here, if equal amounts of energy are absorbed by equal masses of the substances in the table, which will end up the hottest, assuming they all have the same starting temperatures? All right, so you've got equal masses of these guys here, and they all have the same starting temperature. And what we want to know is if they all absorb the same amount of energy, then which one of these will end up the hottest? All right, so what, in order to answer this question, what we need to do is we need to take a look at uh, which one of these guys has the lowest specific heat capacities. And if we take a look at lead here, we can see that the specific heat capacity of lead is 0.126. Okay, so lead has the lowest specific heat capacity. And what that means is if all these guys have absorbed the same amount of energy, then the lead is going to end up the hottest or the highest temperature. All right, so the lead here is going to end up the hottest. And which one will end up the coolest? Well, if we take a look here, the hydrogen has the highest. The hydrogen here has the highest specific heat capacity. So it's going to take a lot of energy, people, to heat up this hydrogen. And so it's going to end up the coolest if each one of these guys absorbs equal amounts of thermal energy. All right, it says which one uh, of these guys here will retain its heat the longest? Well, the one that will retain its heat the longest, people, is the one with the highest specific heat capacity. All right, so if we take a look at hydrogen, it has the highest specific heat capacity, and therefore, it will hold on to its heat the longest. It will not dissipate its heat the longest. So in this little example here, the higher the specific heat value or uh, specific heat capacity, then the, uh, the, the, the more of an ability it has to hold on to its or retain its heat. So the hydrogen here will be the answer to this one. Whoops. And let's take a look here. Which will dissipate its heat the quickest? All right, so if we take a look at these examples, we want to know which one of these substances will release, will release its heat quick, the quickest. And the answer to that will be the one with the lowest specific heat capacity. So the lead here is going to release its heat the quickest. And last but not least, it says which one of these uh, will experience the fastest temperature change? So if equal amounts of energy are absorbed by equal masses of these guys, then which one will experience the fastest temperature change? Once again, that's going to be the one with the lowest specific heat capacity, which in this case is going to be uh, your lead. All right, so the lead here will experience the fastest temperature change. All right, so let's go back to the original slide. If we take a look at this slide here, the fish is saying, I love the specific heat capacity of water. Well, why would the fish be saying that? Well, the specific heat capacity of water people is relatively high compared to most other substances. What this means is that water uh, will not fluctuate in temperature over the course of a day uh, when it's out, left out in the sun or even at night. All right, It has a high specific heat capacity and therefore its temperature will stay relatively about the same over the course of a day keeping this fish pretty happy. All right, so I hope this was helpful.